This is uh, part two of uh, the tutorial slash review of the new uh, possibilities with newer filters to uh, do some restoration and colorizing for uh, photographs. So in part one, we got this far with uh, neural filters. Uh, just to show you, this is the before and after the neural filter before after definitely you know an improvement um, and also in the first part we took care of removing the sepia tone and making it true black and white because I find for the next part which is the colorize it works better if you provide it with a pure black and white picture so I'm gonna turn colorize on and let it do its thing and this of course again depends on um, the speed of your computer the size of the photograph its resolution and so on and immediately I can see that it did a pretty good job but not a perfect job so let's see what we can do here uh, first of all there's all kinds of profiles under adjustment I played around with some of those profiles like retro bright and so on but I find that just like most filters I don't really like them I like you know neutral before we play around with saturation and so on I can see a few things that I want to improve about um, the color um, selection. Now, this is artificial intelligence that chose to give him like, you know, blue coats and brown, you know, uh, hats and so on. But I might want to um, change those choices a little bit. And also, because the photo is faded, you see how his jacket is faded here. So this is where I can manually color image. I can take what the... Um, what AI gave me and I can start colorizing things or marking specific things with specific colors so where it says manual color image I'm going to click in the image or in the like the, uh, the thumbnail of the image where I want to do some changes and I'm going to click it's going to make me choose a color I'm going to choose a color very similar to this now I gotta say that um, it would have been really cool if there was a um, an eyedropper for sampling this color but I I don't see one unless I'm missing something so unless I sample it before I don't know um, I'm going to just eyeball it and I'm saying I want a color pretty much like this and now I got this color here now see how it uh, added this color here I can also say you know what this area needs also a little bit of this color and it tells you that you can um, on Mac option drag and on Windows alt drag to make more of those dots and after it's done thinking a little bit see how it colorized this with a little more blue too and I'm going to go also for his sleeve uh, I like that and to make it more even to do the rest of his jacket the only thing I don't like is that it's a little too blue so I want to kind of fade it out so I can go back to the original color and either reduce its strength which will bring back some of the original colors or you know if I do too much strength it'll make it really blue which is you know it's gonna look like I hand colored it or I can edit the color and make the color less blue and more gray which I like I like right now I like it I can I want to make it even darker even like a darker gray not bad um, what else would I like to do you see the fence behind them looks green and I want it to look more um, brown like you know like a wooden fence so I'm going to click on the wooden fence behind them and I'm going to change this particular color to brown like a nice dark brown and as soon as I did that this area that I clicked on already starts turning brownish I'm going to have to um, start copying I'm alt dragging and I'm going to have to mark quite a few areas on the fence you see how it's already turning kind of brown um, and this area being careful of course not to go into their faces it's like teaching the artificial intelligence telling it you know you see everything that I'm showing you right now I'd like it to be kind of brownish there's another area between them that I want more brown I'm pretty happy with this uh, then some overall adjustments that I can make is 
saturation, which I would rather do later on with, you know, like uh, other Photoshop tools. I can change the balance between cyan and red. For instance, if I think that their faces are too red, I'm going to go to cyan a little bit. I actually kind of like that. Maybe too much, maybe like a tiny negative because uh, their faces were a little too red. Um, I can reduce color artifact, but if I do too much, it reduces all the colors. So I'd rather not do any of it right now. Uh, again, noise reduction, let me try it. But I think, yeah, it, it, it's just going too far. Maybe a little bit, tiny bit. And I think it needs a little more vibrance or saturation, but those are, the, I think I will have better tools to do that uh, outside the neural filters. So for right now, I am going to click OK, making sure that it outputs it to a new layer. And here it is. Now let's follow our history. This is what we just came up with. This it was the previous layer, you know, as a black and white, which is identical to the um, to the previous one. And we started with this. So if we compare the very beginning with what we ended up with, that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, make this a tutorial so long that, you know, I'm going to clean every scratch. Let me just do a few of them the way I would probably do them. I would start with this tool, the spot healing brush tool, make the brush size. I'm using my square brackets to make it, uh, you know, left to make it smaller, right to make it bigger and simply brush over them one at a time for scratches that are bigger or are more complicated I will use the other um, healing brush tool not spot healing brush tool but healing brush tool and for right now this seems to do a, a pretty good job I find that cleaning scratches in the end manually is the best this is not bad there's a little bit of stuff on his face if I just dab I think This is not bad, including this here, a little more, smaller brush, good. As you can see, this picture is not super high resolution to begin with. It's about 1200 by 900. I believe that if it was um, higher resolution, it would also extract more details out of it. Uh, other things I could do, let me uh, duplicate the layer, is use regular tools. For instance, I always give the good old fashioned image auto tone. I always give it a chance. It actually did quite a good job. If it did too much, I can always go edit and fade what it did and go, yeah, I like it, but I only want to keep about 50% of it. Not bad at all. Same thing with auto contrast a little too contrasted. So again, the very last thing you did, you can always edit and f like uh, reduce it or fade it. But you better do it right after your last action. So again, I want the auto contrast, but it's, um, I want to, you know, to keep only 50% of it. And last but not least, let's see what, what auto color will do. Actually, mm, I'm not sure I like it. Let me undo. No, I kind of like the way it was before the auto color. It was worth trying. Again, the neural filters and then slight little improvement that I made to it. I think to uh, finish off the whole thing, I will revisit the camera raw filter because I believe now that it's a color photo, I can have more success maybe with auto, which as usual, auto makes it a little too bright and then I can kind of fix it. I think it made the shadows a little too bright. And maybe the whites are too white. Yeah, because see like the whites. And blacks, actually this is not bad. Let me play around with the temperature. Make it a touch colder. Not bad. Something else that I really like about the camera raw, and this has nothing to do with neural filters, is uh, an adjustment called texture, which is, I, I use it so much 
uh, usually to reduce texture because if I enhance the texture you see how it enhances every single imperfection about the picture but if I reduce texture it's like a noise reduction but a lot more gentle I don't want to reduce too much maybe like you know 10 11 percent maybe 15 percent I have the same approach towards clarity if I increase clarity too much oh this is scary but if I reduce clarity a little bit it looks very flattering if I reduce clarity, clarity all the way down, it looks kind of, you know, uh, dreamy. But if I reduce clarity just a little bit, it smooths out the surfaces as long as I don't do it too much. The other one that's really worth um, playing around with is dehaze, which basically uh, favors any color areas over gray areas. And that way removes the haze. So if I do too much dehazing, it's like, you know, it, it's too much. If I reduce the dehazing all the way down, it's going to look like pure haze. But if I increase the dehaze a little bit, it's a nice combination of color saturation and um, contrast. Speaking of contrast, yeah, it was a little too big. Again, my before, my after, not a big change, but something I like. Uh, last but not least, now I think it's time for some noise reduction under detail. And I'm going to increase. I like the noise reduction in the camera raw. It does a pretty good job. Not too much, or it looks like they have porcelain faces. This is definitely a matter of taste. I want to keep some details, so I'm going to do about 30. The color noise reduction works so much better here. So the color noise reduction will reduce like, you know, areas where there's like a, a, like a, a, a cluster of pixels and each one of them is a different color. It's going to smooth it out. Um, and then I can sharpen it a little bit here. Now, not that much, but just a little bit. And that's actually not bad at all for a picture taken in 1910. I'm going to click OK. And this is what we have now. This is, you know, of course I can keep working on this, but if I... Um, hide all the stages in between we started with this and we are now ending up with this not bad at all is it perfect um not yet will it be a lot more perfect in two or three versions yes it will uh in future tutorials i'm going to go over other neural filters because some of them are pretty amazing